from floor. Uh, I think uh, Mr. O will start first. Thank you. <coughs> uh, my name is uh, Byung Hee. Introduce the Net Neutrality User Forum, uh, which is a uh, coalition uh, of many Korean civil societies, uh, including uh, Open Net Korea and uh, Jimbonet. So uh, I don't want to go into uh, the net neutrality issue in detail uh, because there will be a net neutrality workshop tomorrow and there will be a dynamic coalition on net neutrality on Friday. So uh, I just brief the net neutrality users forum. Okay. <clears throat> uh, last uh, May, the famous uh, Korean uh, uh, mobile app service, uh, Kakao Talk, uh, launched a new Envoy service named Voice Talk. It raised the social debate on net neutrality in Korea uh, because Korea uh, Telecom throttled the Envoy service in some uh, price brand. But it's not the first that uh, Voice Talk is a uh, first the uh, first app service uh, blocked by the uh, Korean Telecom. Uh, before that, before uh, last year, uh, many other Envoy services, uh, such as Naver Line and Town My People and Skype and Viber, also be throttled by the Telecom. But uh, most of Korean uh, press see these uh, issues as a conflict between Korean telecom and uh, content and service providers. But uh, we don't uh, see like that. We, Korean civil society, see this uh, matter as a, a future of the internet uh, because it's not a matter uh, Korean user can use the Envoy service for a cheaper price, but uh, a matter will give the power to regulate the traffic of the internet to the Korean telecom. So uh, uh, it's the matter of the future of the internet. So as a, a direct uh, stakeholder, uh, user have to uh, be able to uh, participate in the debate of the net neutrality matter. So, uh, but at the time, at the time, there was not a platform for users to participate in this discussion. Only the telecom, uh, telecom, uh, and telecom companies and content and application provider has their own uh, organization to, uh, to, uh, through which their voice be heard in the uh, society, but uh, Korean users have no platform. So we made the uh, Net Neutrality Users Forum. It was launched uh, last, the May, on, on the May last year, uh, which is uh, composed of 11 organizations, including Jimbonet and Net, uh, Open Net Korea, and uh, individual users and experts. The objective of uh, NNUF is uh, first to solve the current uh, problem, current matter, uh, current issues of uh, blocking Envoy service uh, by the Korean Telecom. So we uh, have uh, we had many activities to protest against blocking uh, an envoy, blocking the envoy service. And second objective is uh, to open the government policy-making process because uh, at that time Korean government uh, had uh, managed the forum to make the policy on traffic guideline. Uh, related to uh, network neutrality. So 
we want to participate in that discussion, but uh, the governmental policy forum was not uh, uh, was closed, uh, was managed uh, in the closed manner, so we cannot participate in that discussion. Uh, third objective is to propose alternative policies on neutrality, so we proposed uh, several opinion documents to the government. Finally, uh, we uh, network neutrality issue is not an issue only in South Korea, but the global issues. So we would like to, uh, we hope to participate in global cooperation and dialogue. So uh, as you know, in the Internet Governance Forum, uh, this year, <coughs> Uh, Net Neutrality Dynamic Coalition was uh, launched. So there will be a uh, first meeting on Friday. Uh, but before that, we participated in the online discussion on net neutrality and to making the net neutrality model framework. Uh, after launching uh, last May, we had uh, many uh, activity, uh, such as we had several open forums on, uh, on the issues of net, net neutrality and uh, had a lecture and seminar for uh, the public because uh, most of uh, Korean uh, press or the users uh, don't understand the what is the issue of uh, natural neutrality and what is the concept or what was the problem in detail so uh, we try to uh, make public awareness through uh, various lectures and seminar and we raised several legal actions before launching the net uh, NNUF uh, Jimbonet uh, raised a uh, uh, question of blocking the envoy to the Korea Communication Commission and Free, uh, Fair Trade Commission and Human Rights Commission in Korea. Uh, and in 2000, uh, last year in July, we filed an inspection of KCC for its uh, dereliction of duty to, broad, to board of audit and inspection of Korea because uh, we thought the position of KCC, Korea Communication Commission, uh, is to uh, not regulate, let the uh, market uh, uh, and uh, Korean uh, government as a regulator don't touch the matter on net neutrality, uh, which is uh, as a result, allow the Korean Telecom to block the Envoy service. So, yeah, we, we thought we should, uh, uh, Korean Telecom market is monopolized uh, by three uh, telecom, so we thought to uh, preserve the net neutrality, Korean government, Korean Telecom regulatory have to uh, involved to that uh, issues and uh, mm, yeah, do some action. And we issued uh, many statements and opinion documents. And finally, we uh, published the book uh, Speaking on Net Neutrality uh, this early this year. Uh, this is uh, uh, for uh, uh, public awareness, and yeah, this this book. But uh, I'm sorry, but this is uh, in Korean. If we have fun, <laughs> we can translate in English. Uh, but anyway, uh, the yeah, the introduction of that neutrality user forum. Uh, that's it. But uh, I think this. Uh, this introduction on NNUF will be uh, 
will, can uh, inspire to other country and uh, be an opportunity to cooperate with uh, with other uh, with a user of other countries. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, and then the professor Gi introduced the uh, OpenNet. OpenNet launches the, this year, uh, so I think it's very interesting. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Gi Chang Kim. I'm one of the directors of OpenNet Korea, uh, which was launched at the beginning of this year. Um, I had a quick look at uh, Open Forum. Um, it's OECD is holding an Open Forum. Google is holding an Open Forum. Church of England is also Open Forum. Uh, IETF is holding an Open Forum. Uh, UNICEF. So it's a big shot in the whole world scene, and um, I'm very glad that um, IGF Secretariat felt it is useful for this precious time in uh, 2013 IGF to allow an opportunity to introduce what are the issues and what are the challenges facing uh, open net Korea together with the Progressive Net and various other uh, civil society groups in Korea. Uh, perhaps because South Korea poses some of the issues which are not unique to South Korean environment, which can have some universal uh, impact, not only in Korea, but in many other countries or, and also in the global internet community. So I would like to um, share what we, OpenNet uh, in Korea, uh, have been uh, trying to grapple with. Uh, could I ask Jiwan to, yes, <clears throat> just a, a quick uh, background information. Uh, South Korea and the internet, perhaps some people have already heard something about South Korea being the broadband heaven. Uh, South Korea is one of the countries where uh, network connectivity is very, very advanced. And also at the age of mobile devices, uh, South Korea is also uh, excelling in both hardware manufacturing and also in the network con connectivity infrastructure. So uh, the, the rate of uh, penetration of uh, long-term evolution uh, grade of mobile network is also very high in, in Korea. But then what really makes uh, Korean internet interesting is the overzealous uh, approach of policy makers and government officials. And that is what makes South Korean internet very, in some sense, strange. Um, and a lot of people can, not only Koreans, but a lot of policy makers all over the world can make Korean examples uh, as uh, some kind of uh, case study. And then I listed some of the less uh, desirable aspects of South Korea and the internet. Uh, many studies show that uh, South Korea is uh, among the top countries where spam emails originate from. And that shows a lot of things about the situation of South Korea. Spam mails are sent from breached uh, user machines. So that shows South Korea has very high rate of user machines which have been breached, which whose security is uh, not, not very nice. Um, Maybe some would think that, well, it's individual PCs, their problems, so what, what is it such a big deal? But then I think the security 
um, individual PC its individual's possession, but it also has great deal of implication in the internet, how secure individuals' machines uh, are maintained. And that depends on policy as well. It is not only a question of individuals' ability, it is also very closely connected to what kind of policy is implemented and enforced in that country. South Korean policy somehow systematically uh, provokes users to adopt a very risky behavior. Um, and also, South Korean government uh, required mandatory verification of user identity from 2007. Uh, that created South Korean internet some sort of island insulated from the rest of the world. Uh, and uh, it was not good for the industry, not good for the content providers, uh, internet-based uh, content providers. Uh, it's not good for the users. It didn't do any good to the law enforcement agencies. Uh, in the end, it was considered to be a failure. So, uh, 2012, the Constitutional Court uh, ruled that uh, the legislation is unconstitutional. So that legislation is gone, but then there is still a requirement, a legal requirement, uh, for identifying game users. The legislation which was declared unconstitutional dealt with posting uh, any kind of writing or text or images, any kind of online content on some of the popular uh, websites. That is declared unconstitutional. But there still exists uh, legislation which requires game users to identify uh, their true offline identity. The reason is to uh, find out about whether they are uh, of full age or whether they are uh, minors. In other words, protection of minor uh, is still a legitimate concern and there exists uh, legislation uh, which aims to address that concern. But then that creates another huge problem. Uh, game industry suffers obviously a great deal, but Policymakers and uh, members of parliament, uh, the members, assemblymen, they think game industry can, can, can be oppressed. Um, but uh, parents apparently like this legislation. Parents feel that this legislation helps their children to work harder and somehow deal with the problem of game addiction. But then, is it a workable uh, scenario? That is a, a different issue. Um, it seems to us, Open Net Korea feels that the current legislation somehow gives a false impression that uh, game addiction issues can be dealt with by some mandatory legislation, as if youngsters' problems of spending too much time on games playing can be dealt with by introducing a legislation. If that was true, I th would think that every country in the world would introduce that kind of legislation. I think in reality, game uh, addiction is uh, not such an easy problem. It is an issue which requires constant effort on the part of parents. And parents need to make an effort to engage their children. And that kind of, the, the inevitable effort somehow is uh, hijacked by this legislation. And lawmakers give a misleading impression that their legislation would do magic, wonder. Uh, and I don't think it can deliver. And then another thing about uh, Korean NIS, 
uh, National Intelligence Service, uh, United States National Security uh, uh, what is it, Agency, they were under a great deal of media sort of uproar regarding their uh, intelligence gathering, data gathering, surveillance activities. South Korean National Intelligence Service has not been in similar scrutiny, but they were engaged in something somewhat more embarrassing. They were kind of deeply involved in Korean politics by anonymously posting some of the politically oriented uh, materials, trying to influence the outcome of uh, important uh, election. And that also shows how uh, state organs or governmental organs can have some undesirable impact somehow trying to influence public opinion on the internet by infiltrating and disguising as users. I suppose South Korea is not the only government who does it. Uh, some other governments also are said to be engaged in similar activities, but that also shows a, a true, I mean, very honest face uh, situation in South Korea and the challenges South Korean internet and internet users are facing at the moment. Next slide, please. Um, and um, unlike uh, some of the more rosy and glowing uh, media coverage about South Korea being very advanced, uh, the undesirable aspect of South Korean internet is uh, quite numerous. I, uh, selected only a few of them. First, uh, robots.txt, as you would all know, it uh, can control uh, the access of search engine, search engine robots. If you run a website, you can decide which part of your web, uh, website material should be available to search engines. If you normally, you wouldn't want to uh, block search engines from indexing your material because otherwise if you don't allow search engines people won't be able to search you. The problem is that a lot of government websites, public uh, authorities, public bodies who run a website which is accessible to everybody, it's a publicly open, available, accessible website, they do have information there <coughs> but then they put robots.txt so that uh, search engines cannot come in. So what's the point of having a website where people cannot search your website? So that's, I think, just a result of sheer ignorance on the part of uh, those public bodies. And then some other aspects is... Um, South Korea has a, a policy of banning export of map data. Um, map data, a lot of map data can contain sensitive information, but I'm not talking about those sensitive information. I'm talking about publicly available map data. Uh, but South Korea insists that those uh, map data must be stored in Korea. So Korean uh, service providers can offer map service using those map data stored and operated in a server located in Korea. But overseas service providers cannot operate Korean map data. That is bizarre because everyone in the world can, if they connect to a Korean web service provider, for example, down.net, they can have access to Korean map data, uh, whether it's North Koreans or Chinese, whatever, anyone can have access. But uh, Apple, for example, or Garmin, Garmin is a very big navigation uh, uh, hardware software provider, they cannot make use of Korean map data, so they cannot offer navigation service. 
So that's a very strange situation. Location data is different from map data. If you want to do business or write a web, uh, write an application which uses location data, you have to report to government authorities. That's also very strange. And Korea has a national PKI system uh, which requires every users to have digital certificate and that created a number of uh, technical and business related problem. Uh, there are also legislations which have been introduced by politically motivated uh, assemblymen. Uh, one such legislation is that we have mandatory takedown rule. Many countries in the world have takedown notice and takedown regime for copyright infringement. So if you believe that your copyright is infringed by this particular posting, you can ask that posting to be taken down and site operator can just automatically take it down and then that is notified to the original poster and if pro poster believes that that does not infringe, then site, site operator can just resuscitate, and then these two people can fight. That is a very well-known system. Many countries have it, and that removes the burden from site operator having to judge whether this infringes or not infringe. That's all okay, in my view, or at least that is you know, more or less working in many countries. However, South Korea has a different in addition to copyright infringement notice takedown regime, in addition to that, we have a takedown legislation for generally all unlawful material, which is very, very vast and which is very often used for alleged defamation. And politicians or big companies, they use this particular legislation to forcibly remove any content which they find a little bit embarrassing, somewhat uncomfortable, they allege this is defamatory, take it down, and then site operators are obliged to take it down. This is a very serious infringement uh, against a freedom of expression on the internet, and this legislation is somewhat, you know, one of the few legislations in the world. Um, also, we are facing more broad challenge, uh, which is necessitated by paradigm shift in copyright. Uh, copyright is a very important issue in the internet. In the traditional world where physical medium needs to be somehow delivered to the ultimate end user, you know, you need to buy a book and that physical medium somehow needs to be produced, stored, and inventoried, and then when, when order is placed, it needs to be uh, dispatched, and then it needs to be delivered, and it, either it's a courier service or postal service or high street shops. That physical need, media needs to change places and that's very expensive system of author having their content ultimately reach the uh, consumer. That is a different world and copyright, I think, regime served a purpose of paying to maintain that very elaborate uh, distribution logistics. But in the digital world, you don't need that expensive and elaborate distribution logistics. Author can have immediately reach audience all over the world at negligible cost. Do we still need copyright regime, which was developed and which worked to pay for this very expensive distribution logistics? When we no longer need distribution logistics, do we still need the uh, conventional copyright protection regime? Aren't there more and better ways of paying and compensating authors? Those are the challenges we are facing. Could we move on to the final slide? Uh, 
Uh, Open Net Korea is dealing with these topics. We deal with freedom of expression issues, oppression from government, and also freedom from surveillance, uh, and also uh, reforming unreasonable regulations is uh, uh, an area where Open Net uh, devotes quite a lot of resource. Uh, net neutrality issue, uh, tele telecom companies' decision can it shape the future development of technologies? Can telecom company decide which new efforts should be allowed and which other new efforts should be banned? Uh, also, we are vigorously pursuing open data policy. So those are the issues we are tackling. And finally, if we move on to uh, the next slide. Um, we do these things. We do blogging. Uh, blogging is mainly to give accurate and timely analysis of pending policy issues. To whom? To news reporters, I think. I think it is important that the media and news uh, report, they are aware of the accurate information and accurate system. And then we campaign for law reform. We approach uh, assemblymen and we push legislation. And we are also do, uh, doing public interest lawsuits, which uh, my friend Ji Huan will speak a little bit more. And we offer modest uh, scholarships and research grants. And that's it for Open Net Korea. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, it's very kind explanation. Yes. Uh, are there any questions or comments? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think uh, we should go to the discussion about uh, this uh, speech. Uh, so, uh, the, okay. yeah, Mr. Ba uh, will be introduced and discussed. Hello, my name is Joan Park, a lawyer working for OpenNet. Um, OpenNet Korea has conducted campaigns in adopting the right policy and correcting wrong policy in such a way that Internet users are directly involved, um, especially with regard to policies that are implemented through the laws. Uh, OpenNet has represented the interest of users with respect to Internet policies in conjunction with other uh, civil orga organizations, including JimboNet and other uh, NGOs in Korea, by planning uh, direct and effective cam campaigns that can affect the legislation as well as the policies. Uh, in some cases, it may be necessary to resolve the problem directly through a, through a lawsuit. Therefore, we open it. Uh, has performed several public uh, interest in litigation this year. And I will briefly introduce some of the activities of Open Net Korea this year. Uh, firstly, um, Open Net filed an information disclo disclosure lawsuit against the Ministry of Science, ICT, and Future Planning in Charge of Net Neutrality on material that had been discussed in the Net Neutrality Advisory Committee regarding data traffic management guideline because the uh, government denied to disclose the meeting material to public. Um, I think it is important to guarantee openness and equity to participating in setting net neutrality norm process. Uh, prerequisite of openness is to guarantee anyone to full access to all information. That is why OpenNet filed the lawsuit. And secondly, uh, civil, regarding civil action, um, SK Telecom and KT, the major telecommunication company in Korea, have blocked lower data plan user cannot use the Envoy service using 3G or 4G data network. Uh, OpenNet, as well as with JimboNet and other NGOs in Korea, 
filed a lawsuit against SKT and KT for their practice of discriminating users arbitrarily, violated the fair competition law, which prevents business uh, entity from uh, abusing its market dominance. Uh, that was civil action that OpenNet had filed. And thirdly, uh, we have several constitution, uh, raised several constitutional lawsuits. Um, current Korean juvenile protection law and game industry law impose identification duty, as Mr. Kim has already mentioned, uh, which means any user has to give his or her real name to access material uh, that government issue issues as harmful to minors under 19, uh, as well as online games. Uh, OpenNet uh, filed a lawsuit challenging the constitution constitutionality regarding the right to know and as well as free speech, speech right this year. And lastly, um, regarding legislation movement in Korea, um, current electric, electric financial transaction law has burdened the people to use only public authentication key, the national PKI key, when they buy something online exceeding uh, $300. But national PK system in Korea has been criticized that it is quite vulnerable to hackers' attack and it, it, it also restricts um, competi competitivity of online security market. Uh, OpenNet with uh, lawmaker drafted the revision of the electric financial trans transaction law which allows other authentication methods allows other authentication methods as well as national PKI. Uh, Mr. Ki Chan Kim has engaged in this issue for about uh, more than seven years and I hope that he will uh, elaborate on this issue after my presentation. Uh, that was my presentation and thank you for your attention. Yes, thank you. Uh, I think uh, the uh, left time is very small. Later, uh, uh, how about uh, getting uh, additional information from the panelists? The, um, I'm sure uh, we are all waiting for questions from um, the floor, but just one thing I would like to add about uh, M VoIP uh, lawsuit. Our argument is that um, whether you have a cheaper <coughs> monthly plan, something like uh, uh, $40 a month, or whether you have more luxurious monthly plan, uh, you are buying your talk time and your text messaging and your data. It is something you paid for. So even if you're, you are going for cheaper monthly uh, contract, Still, you have already paid for the data, and you should be able to choose how to use your data. And currently, the tele telecom company only allows users who chose more luxurious, more expensive contract to have that freedom to decide what to do with the data you paid for. So that we feel that that is unreasonable discrimination. You know, even if I chose a cheaper data plan, I paid for that little amount of data, and my money is just equally useful or worthwhile as people who chose um, bigger or more luxurious data uh, monthly plan. That's the main reason for for our current lawsuit. Are there any comments from remote participation? No, okay. Uh, I think uh, to summarize uh, this uh, speech, uh, I think we should focus on the uh, cooperation uh, with people uh, uh, having the uh, same uh, objective uh, at the regional or global level, uh, not 
in the limited uh, in our national level. Uh, so I think it's, uh, today's uh, open forum is a very good opportunity to. Oh, okay, yes, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> yes, uh, I think uh, we should share our ideas uh, uh, at the more developed level. Uh, so it's very good opportunity, uh, and then. Hello. Yeah, let me comment uh, and address me suggest. First of all, Korea, South Korea. If you're talking about the internet infrastructure, typically we are ranked number one, number two, number three, top five. Then the economy, to make money, yes, also we are uh, top five. This is one good aspect. The other aspect, I just saw the uh, Internet Freedom House report that ranked the Korea 19 uh, along the uh, uh, Brazil, Azerbaijan, Uganda. And uh, this discrepancy, why in some area, infra infrastructure, the sort of a technology, Area we are top five, and uh, then uh, like a uh, uh, soft area, like internet freedom, <clears throat> we are not too high. And uh, this discrepancy is the one, I guess, uh, uh, why we have uh, so many NGO, internet NGO in Korea, and uh, they are struggling to address you know, those uh, problems. And ideally, we should have a similar uh, the ranking. And uh, then I guess this phenomena may not be unique in Korea, may be common to the, our neighbor country in Asia. So the, my suggestion is the, uh, for next year, let's try to get uh, other NGO in our neighboring country. Uh, like uh, China, Japan, Taiwan, uh, Southeast Asia, and uh, let them, each one of them sort of present five minutes each, then have a discussion. Do we have uh, something in common? Or well, this is uh, unique to the Korea and a few countries. That's something we don't know yet. And uh, <clears throat> then uh, one advertisement. I'm the uh, uh, co-moderator of the workshop on Thursday morning, uh, 9 o'clock. This is the internet governance uh, for <clears throat> new uh, billion users. What it boils down is uh, they are looking into the internet governance for the uh, uh, developing countries. And uh, many developing countries have uh, this similar problem of this discrepancy. And uh, you may come to the, uh, this session, 9 o'clock, and uh, then uh, you may raise uh, this issue of Korea. Either you can define the Korea as a developed country in terms of the technology, or a developing country or an underdeveloped country in terms of those uh, uh, soft area. And uh, we'll see. And unfortunately, even though I'm the co-moderator, I can attend the uh, meeting because I have a, another workshop which I'm moderating. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> one of the reasons I think of um, why there is this fairly big discrepancy uh, between technical advancement or economic advancement on the one hand and other more uh, complex issues surrounding the use of internet is perhaps uh, government officials have difficulty having accurate understanding of the 
ramifications of the, the policies they, they take. Quite often, government officials are approached by either industry or academia. So some companies who have come up with some sort of business ideas or some technology, yeah. hiding their agenda of making money, and they approach government officials with this very rosy description of the growth potential of this particular technology. And government officials can easily be led to believe that this is the way forward and mobilize the public resource into this particular field. Sometimes it's academia, the professors, who advise government officials. And whichever is the case, in Korea so far, the result is that officials somehow invoke power and mandatory, some form of mandatory, some form of forcible reallocation of resources are taking place so that market selection or selection by technical excellence do not work. It's the policy decision which cripples the future course of development. And that's what happens with regard to national PKI. This morning I heard from participants from Kenya or um, Vietnam and some other countries who come to me and say their governments are also about to introduce this digital certificate. And actually it's South Korean government who kind of paid those governments to adopt uh, uh, PKI. If it is a good technology, why does government have to go around and pay money so that these other governments buy this structure? I think if it's a good technology, uh, it should be able to survive in the market. And when government is involved to promote a particular technology, I think it's a clearest sign that that technology is bound to fail. And uh, this, this is... Uh, a, a very endemic problem of South Korean policy making r regarding internet. Government is supporting a technology which is no longer viable in the market simply because at some point some industry uh, interested party approached officials or academic prof professors advised government wrongly. Uh, I Ah, yes. Uh, just a simple uh, comment uh, uh, to the question uh, of uh, discrepancy of broadband heaven and uh, the bad uh, public policy regarding uh, internet. Uh, one of my observations is that, uh, particularly in Korean society, uh, uh, government te telecommunication policy uh, is uh, seeking uh, some kind of industrial policy, economic growth policy, rather than communication policy. You know, uh, in Korea, uh, telecommunication regulation authority, uh, they definitely uh, uh, undertaking the telecommunication policies. Nevertheless, they are thinking uh, it uh, in terms of industrial growth rather than communication policy. Uh, that's one of the serious problems we are facing. Uh, so governmental officials and bureaucrats are thinking technology or uh, technological service as a, a, a economic resource or competitive uh, good uh, rather than communication environment. Uh, that's one of the pro problems we are facing. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the other aspect of the problem, discrepancy, uh, is that uh, as uh, uh, Professor uh, Kim Gi Chang have just mentioned, uh, uh, governmental officials are proud of uh, uh, broadband heaven. Uh, even even not uh, not only for uh, uh, 
uh, government officials, even and the users, are thinking uh, in the same way. Uh, because uh, definitely uh, our broadband environment is very, very excellent, uh, very, very good. So end users, uh, their major concern is how to enjoy and how to use this kind of uh, uh, comfortable environment uh, for their own purposes rather than the uh, general atmosphere, general uh, ecosystem of uh, internet, which uh, those public policies regarding internet is greatly affecting uh, on society in general. So only in some, only sometimes, sometimes in some specific, uh, uh, specific time uh, when the end user environment uh, uh, would be uh, severely uh, affected by uh, uh, particular incidents. Uh, in the case, uh, they are awakening uh, that uh, our uh, uh, internet ecology is not so good but uh, they are not uh, effectively